Greetings, this is Freena Rina Mentua. I welcome you to my recap of Critical Role's Red Nose Day. Hey, hey, special Choose Your Own Adventure again. Uh, this, uh, uh yeah, one, this adventure for, for Red Nose Day to benefit. Uh, 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 basically give children need uh, they get the resources they need. Mm. Yeah. We it start we start off with meeting the cast for the day's one shot. Uh, with uh, the GM being met, we got Laura Bailey. Tony Hale, mm -hmm. we got uh, we got Towson, and we got uh, J Sam Richardson, and filling in for the absent uh, Liam O'Brien, we got Sam Regal. I just I would maybe just refer to them as. Uh, 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 Sam and their last initial, but they have the same one and the same preceding letter. I'll be uh, once we get into it, I'm just gonna be referring to them by the character names anyway, so that won't, shouldn't be a problem. It, it we start out on the northwestern sh shore of the island uh, of uh, the island of Ath of Ath of the Ray Ath a uh, with uh, 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 which is and one of the islands of the. Of the Shadow State, specifically a northern one, a one of the northernmost ones, which actually lies just outside the fog. The... Hmm. Oh, there. Uh, there. Uh, here we find the. Uh, uh, the the very now active city uh, uh, village of Drobago Drobagos uh, uh, a name which means ho home of the dreamer in uh, in the Galapaga tongue uh, for those who don't know Galapaga is a name, is like an exaggerated name for turtle. Is due to its its position just outside normal position just outside the fog, it is actually a a sub the a used as a supply stop for those trip traveling in, into the in, in for those who sail or within the bounds of the shower teeth. And in the town, we see they're now preparing for the yearly festival. Oh, the Moon Tide Festival, to be precise. Uh, there are um, it, all this sort of thing. Stop preparing. There's the entertainment show of arts and talents stuff, a lot of food. You know, traditional festival activities. Uh, 
and because of the increased activity, also increased uh, sometimes increased criminal activity, and we use the term criminal very loosely here. It's for this reason that the elder, the elder uh, Alda Fud, Alda Food, Elder has hired a local uh, band of adventurers of uh, uh, to, to provide security for the the event. And it's here that we meet uh, our, the our, the first party member. Ranthio Voltor Hang on As he, he is a human warlock level, they're all level five. Of this case, and uh, he's having a conversation with uh, with the uh, fairy barbarian Bramble. Oh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, uh, Raphael uh, is is Sam Richardson's character. Well, Bramble, the fairy barbarian, is the Laura Bailey's. Apparently, they have a conversation. Apparently, it sounds like they had a one night stand with, it, but which Bramble thinks means a long term relationship. Then it comes to after we we go to we find a group of a familiar group to those who know Critical Role a familiar group of uh, of uh, bards. Doctor Dranzel's tra tra traveling. Uh, uh, where the frick is it? Uh, Dr. Dresden, accompanied by none other than Sam's character or for the day, Scanlan. Yes, it's that Scanlan. It is now that we realize that this is something of a prequel to the main campaign. Him being only level 5. Smart. I'm not actually sure if this is canonical or not. This has been made canonical. Because well, I have no idea what level they started out uh, when they started doing their home campaign. Or backstory. Uh, I do know, know that they were that when they first were playing, they were playing Pathfinder and made the switch to D and D when they started streaming. Uh, he's uh kind of being put down by another musician there, uh, Kent Bucker, kind of acting like Rick. Like, Scanlan's kind of doesn't have his new, the bravado we normally see him with. Um, this is the young, time nervous Scanlan. Doesn't quite have his famous horny streak too, so I like him a lot better than this. Then we get to Talzin's character, Bobby Socks. A uh, I actually had to check this out. Uh, uh, wait, hang on. I just gotta check out the. Okay, he is a halfling. Uh, he 
uh, uh, fifteen, but he's still he's still young, but he's all also have so yeah, very tiny, small character. So it, if it wasn't for the fact that they were traveling with a fairy, he'd be the smallest. So it's right there. Oh, he's a uh, Kent's son. Uh, sorry, I forgot about that. And which finally leaves us to the last member of the party, Tommy Hale's character, er, Sarge. I think I actually was one of the ones who donated to uh, get him to be a ranger. So, which is kind of, I always thought, underrepresented it in the campaign. But yeah, we had one. <sighs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. In addition to being a ranger, he's also a drummer. Uh, it is worth noting that right when we first see him, he his has his hair dyed black, uh, and it's not an ego thing either, as we'll soon find out. Oh, with him is is Sarge's faithful companion, Ethel. An effing right white tiger. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, hail being Galabru is kind of little get uh trying to uh let sip. Uh, he used to be a world performer in Nicodronus. But uh, but then they did come point out. Maybe not wait a little bit before you tell your entire backstory. Like wait till it's relevant. And. Mm -hmm. No, I have, I had platinum white hair, and um, as you notice, I have a dark blue eye and a, and a, and a light blue eye. It's captivating. Uh, these coveralls I'm wearing, I designed perfectly, half dark blue, half light Are blue. Are they skin tight? They're not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I got, uh, I got black. Combat boots. Ooh, sick. As you know, for reason I will unveil later because I don't like to give you too much information. <laughs> um, I have dyed my hair black. Well, we'll definitely get into there. Um, is here. We actually now meet uh, Elder uh, Aberfoon. A elderly Galapa. Uh, I kind of, based on the description, I kind of picturing like a uh, turtle, turtle uh, because uh, like he's very like thin uh, up and by the track, but has like like falls out there. So I'm, I'm kind of getting a, I kind of imagine a little bit of something, a bit of a Popeye inspiration there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, he's also got like a lot of tattoos painted onto his shell. So if, uh, he tells him what he's looking for. Like, oh, every year there's a Martin Greaston like stealing baubles and stuff. Like, Nicking food from stuff and stuff, and then like, so we're here for small crimes, stuff, and and like he said, nothing small to the people who make all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, yeah, this is a, a small village, uh, so these like small crimes are a little bit more um, towards there. Hmm. 
there. There. Um, Uh, I'm such a capable individual. This is you. Um, Somebody stole your fish or your little baubles? Ugh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they meet... Yeah, they meet this... Uh... Hang on. They meet, there's this woman who comes in and someone's a fall around asking for help. Uh, she recognizes, that she introduces herself as Ole, like, G A, uh, and she, who apparently lives a little bit outside the village, the sister mother. I, I live a small ways outside of Drobanagos, uh, in a, a small cabin by the waters with my sister Telis and my mother, uh, Parthanthanope. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> All right. We've been... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've been noticing the local wildlife. Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, um... The, there's been strange activity on the local wildlife, and when they, they and when they searched, they found a cove with a what was described as a uh, a serious dark ship. Uh, sorry, it was in a sea cave. Uh, there. Uh, unfortunately, they were spotted, and while she made a made her escape, was able to make escape. Her sister has been captured and needs help rescuing her. Uh, it is then that uh, Sarge introduces them as their group. They're kind of not an official legendary group. Like they uh, like were just like at home, you know, same place at the same time, and dealt with something at the same time. So they were kind of and just behind out. But since they're doing this, they'll be Sarge officially christens them the Glorious Ones. There. Oh. Well, that's a, that tiger's a lot smaller than I thought it'd be. I thought I'd be at least as tall as him, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all. And they start traveling to, and to find the sister and. Uh, so Sarge feels a, a cold show, which he associates with it, like his lingering past. Like a yeah, he uh, Hale, you're. I think you're a little uh, eager for exposition. <laughs> and even going far as asking if the crew looked anything at all like royalty, like which. Get, does cause some confusion. And after Bramble uh, to cast Speaker, I'll talk to, with um, Ethel. 
Uh, we get the exposition. Apparently, he, he was the entertainer for a royal uh, court or something like this. But on one day, like one of the members of the royal family in the pajamas. But he witnessed one of the family members murder uh, some innocent guy. I, uh, but they pinned the blame on him because, of course, they're royalty. Apparently, and this was five years ago, he's been on one of the sons. It's why he's dyed his hair to keep on the down low. Uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, while this is going on, uh, Liger, 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 is uh flirting with R Raphael. Uh, we'll just we'll, who is for not the rest of the thing is just called Ran. And they kind of grief to go on a date later. So also while this but it was this some sort of egg, like circular rock or egg. Uh, they they use it as like an egg thing, but they then keep referring to it as a rock. He, it, this is something he found on the beaches and stuff earlier, and this is way back. And notice it is now cracking. Uh, stuff. And to test uh, out what if it's really hatching or it, it's just a phone, um, Rain actually casts Eldritch Blast on it, which sends it full, which doesn't damage it, but does send it flying off into the jungle. They are quickly able to relocate it, because, thankfully, but, yeah. Then they, some, but now, well, as they locate, they also now hear, well, here seems to be angelic si saying. And above them there is this truly beautiful looking, like, Ideal idealized apple, oh, and with uh, this with a bit of a magical aura around it, and tell they can hear hear in their heads a it a voice speaking to them telepathically. It welcomes them, and it is they think it's coming from the apple. It seems to be offering a knowledge per. Uh, knowledge, purpose, and potential. And for those in here in the Grove of Enlightenment. And thanks, thank, and thanks to Sarge's entire tech, they, they recognize this apple as referred to as an ancient gift. It tells... It, Telling him to bring it with him, so he puts it in. <clears throat> and it says uh, it will come with him, and it gets what he has. Uh, uh. Because oh, uh, I believe during his role, it's a, we find out that uh, Sarge actually has the lucky feet. <sighs> the move on the the more food based snaggins continue as they reach. A pile of very beautiful vegetables with a sign saying they're free. Uh, 
Uh, Bravo quickly just goes in and get, gets like a gore for herself, but uh, Ethel is very, very, and a quick it reveals that in a nearby bush, there are. Uh, well, around them there are snares and stuff all around, and in a bush there there are four kobolds. Think suspecting a trap, uh, Bert, but flies over there. It gives a little spook, scattering them and begin. And so begins the first combat of the game. Charge goes in. The man to hit two of them with his blow dart. I think this might be the first time I ever seen a player character use a blow dart. By the way, oh, there. Um. Uh, uh, Brent, uh, they say that they take the little dart, and but also are poisoned, which is the primary thing you you want with a blow dart. Bramble rages, goes in, right here, so. There, uh, in the uh, Sarge uh, thinks he could see a speck little figure in the woods around them. And well. <laughs> The one next to it is like. <laughs> oh sweet! That means I get another attack. Okay. Right? If I if I knock somebody out, I get to attack again. And do you have an ability that, that lets you do that? Isn't that a barbarian thing? <laughs> no, that's that's a feat. Of, that's, that's a feat ability. <laughs> that, well, cool. that is cool. There, there are there are feats and abilities that can do that. But if that was what Grog used to do, so that's why I thought it was. There, because he had the feet. He's special. But that's okay. But you, ah! <laughs> <laughs> fly back into the air like this like blood smear in the front of you <laughs> it's just this nightmare fairy kind of pulling back wow. into the jungle wow. great that finishes your okay uh so uh one of the kobolds then uses sling and and uh and, and aiming for sarge but the first one missing but more making up with with a natural 20 on the second hit uh, uh, which, uh Bloodying uh, Rand's forehead. Uh, Bobby uh, cast uh, uh, though he immediately though he immediately uses his own to take out the cobalt in retaliation. Uh, uh, Brent, uh, Brent thought of him. Uh, 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 Bobby can tangle at one point there. Uh, 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 to trapping something up. I think they actually succeeded the, the, their saves, but they're still in bad territory. Uh, Rough terrain. Come on. <coughs> Four plus two, seven. Seven points of damage. That that will cause him to the impact hits. You see him kind of tense up and like poof, opens his eyes. <laughs> And he just has this massive hole in his chest. Oh, wow. <laughs> and just oh, to the ground. And especially that was no one laughs at me. <laughs> <laughs> so the two and that was the retaliation. Uh, 
As Scanlan attempts to uh, talk to them, that the, the two remaining kobolds down, but uh, and he actually can suggest you know, one of them successfully uh, causing them to go down too soon. Sarge jumps in front, uh, does a little bit of an acrobatic jump in front of the, one of them. Bramble manages to... Uh, take one out. Out uh, with a ballot. And the, co the, and the and the surviving cobalt, the one who uh, explains what they apparently they were just bored and and they decide to um to let him go and stuff. He uh, loots bodies and said and looks at one of them. Never like you. Stuff and it one of the old, it does seem to have a little bit of a focus on the apple, but it it goes without any further issue. Um, Sarge once again then sees a ghostly figure in the mist, one that he recognizes. Okay, let's see one. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, he just kind of glances at you for a second. Do you speak gnomish? Oh, they're talking about the. Yeah, this is the, the cobalt. <laughs> Oh, well, he does. He's he just has a really strong accent, See? like we me. Both we both Whoa. have accents. <laughs> okay, let's go. Do you work? Do you work for? A, do you work for anyone else? Is there anyone? No. Oh. She's running to get people stuck oh, in my life. Then, so, then run away. We should, what are we doing with this? You killed my friends. Well, they you tried. hit me in the head, mate. Well, you just ambush. What are you protecting? I think we were bored. Well, lesson learned, eh? Sorry. Apologies. <laughs> My apologies. Well, then run off and okay. learn your lesson. <laughs> Picks up his stuff. Turn around. Leave the leave the vegetables. Okay. I'll try it again. Goes and like empties the pockets of all the bodies of his friends and like fills the stuff like. <laughs> Kind of spits on one of them. I don't like him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then darts off into the rest of the jungle. It is then that they see the the face in the mist. And begin to hear like a I couldn't make it out. It's my name. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's my name. Oh, so there's a I'm ghostly apple. I'm on your shoulder. Who are you? I'm wait, sorry. you have a ghost after you? Yeah. Wait, so the he's dead? Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> no. No. I don't understand. Wait. I don't, I'm a little bit confused myself. But, but, you know what? Let's just keep it going. Maybe, 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 we'll, maybe we'll, the answer will present itself to us. <laughs> I, I think the answer will present itself to let us. Me, let me back up. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember how I said that, that the guy who um, did the murder, right? Mm. Um, I thought it was him. Not him. No. no okay. No. The person murdered. That's who it was. That you saw? That's the Are you around. sure about that? You, yeah. you know what? Maybe know. don't Listen. go on record yet until no. we actually see <laughs> it. I can see why they didn't leave her out. Did you actually kill the guy? 
Yeah, I didn't seems go. Lucky. No, I'm tell- <laughs> no, I was a scapegoat in all this. A skateboard? I was a skateboard. <laughs> Insight check. <laughs> Inside check. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, I'm a skateboard. <laughs> so I mean, I'm calling an inside check. I call an inside <laughs> check. To be completely sure. open with you. <laughs> Sixty. So you do, like, kick flips and stuff? Yeah. Listen. Nineteen. Nineteen, 19 inside he check. It. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> he's not so, a skateboard. <laughs> I'm pretty mm. sure he's not a skateboard. guys. I've been through a lot, yeah. and I'm really traumatized. Yeah, I have been like on so the ride. So I thought it was my enemy. Now I'm realizing that's the guy that they killed, and I think he's haunting me. Well, thinking that. <laughs> I, again, I can I feel like you should just. You hear the special okay, voice <laughs> over the mist says, like, it's clarification. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 Maybe, mm. I just think we need to put all our cards on the table. <laughs> <laughs> really be honest. Okay. okay. So that's what's happening. Are we all sharing backstory okay. now? Is Wait. That... Yes, yeah, so Fixons, what's your mother's uh, name, Scanlon? <laughs> I do that callback. They go, uh, Bobby the keels around up a little bit. Um, and, and that's what the G, G points out that they still need to go and rescue his sister. And they keep going to reach the coast. And uh, that's when they seemingly meet the sister. There, um, and include and a third woman who who they say is the mother. There comes and it helps. And Rin though weren't uh, the and the basically tells them and he brings up his concerns like these might not be who they th- say women well, might be say they are. Um he thinks that they're they're using illusions of perform based on like a sort of distortion in the face he's noticed. When they go to the and he warns about this as the, we're trying to go, tell, convince them to go and face the bad man. And after a long conversation, they said that they uh, the woman said, "Oh, forget this." It says we well. It says we only need the blood of one of them. They, and they they reveal the Merfolk Sirens, who immediately uh, cast a spell, charming Bobby, and they, he wasn't in the last game. Using his drum, uh, Sarge uses his drone to cast Pass Wild Trace, which now I think of it. Kind of weird choice to have how to cast it, considering you're trying to be stealthy. The party goes in the cavern well, go trying to save Bobby, who they perceive is about to be sacrificed. <clears throat> Uh, 
happens after that. Uh -oh. oh, yeah. Oh, no. And oh, you are dominated and charmed. I am dominated and charmed. Is oh. the going to kill me? They always want virgins. Let's go. Oh. He's definitely a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> but we wait. <laughs> <laughs> I have a girlfriend and I'm on. I don't think he does. I don't think he does. <laughs> You watch as Bobby vanishes into the mist-filled cavern alongside with the three strange siren-like women. Remind me never to have kids. Down. I've grown quite fond of him, and we probably should go after him. Yeah, we should. All right. They discovered that the the three uh, sirens and Bobby there. They uh, the sirens are chanting. Anything around three altars. But upon one which oh Bobby's standing. They notice this and it's this time they notice the that the altars are glowing as the sirens chant and revealing this like truly gigantic crab entity. There. there, it's canvas um, covered in the wrecks of ships. It see it does not seem to be uh, conscious or awake, or something like that it, it is still immobile. And but they notice that Bobby is trying to. Is filling Charles is on, on a child that is on the altar he's at with with blood from his hand, and then uh, and notice that there are Charles's on all the other altars as well. They think the best course is to try to attempt to. Uh, Who oh, await uh, um is to uh, attempt to rescue, but, but with trying with making as little noise possible, step to not wake this crab and he. Mm. And they notice that, uh, and I should probably uh, the ch the other two challenges are filled and. With the filling of the third one, it, the, this altar also starts to glow. In the sign, with the sign saying, uh, 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 the sign, uh, may the dreamer awaken in our binds, run the land above and punish those who do not deserve your protection. And they notice as this goes, the, the crab is starting to stir. And Ran immediately goes in and counterspells the. Use a counterspell and manage is to, to knock out a, a part of the. And one of the challenges sparks goes down. And Bran immediately casts Fairy Fire upon. The area with the uh, sirens, and with that, the combat is started. With the uh, Bobby's, uh, the 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 spell on Bobby is broken, and he immediately wild shapes into what is described as a battle alpaca. Interesting choice, but he's only level five. There, uh, uh Sarge attacks the giant crab, which, uh, but uh, he can't pierce it though. All it seems to do is does is manage to wake it up. 
It comes in until 8 to M. Uh, Scanlan manages to reduce the damage with Cutting Worm, but it still. Oh, uh, but it still leaves Sarge in a very dangerous spot after one uh, attack. Mm. When it, when it's woken up, it says, "You fools! Now we will not be able to control it." So uh, they may have just realized, uh oh, that wasn't—it wasn't a waking thing. It's just a lot to be tamed, to be controlled. Um, so this is, yeah. Uh, so they do know that this is still hostile. So to. Uh, well, a, a siren man hits, lands a fireball on uh, Bramble, Scanlan, and Ran. Uh, Bramble manages to uh, to make the save, and then wounds uh, and lands a wound on Legia. With Ran coming in and. He, with a Hexwing's curse. Uh, with, with, with his first attack seemingly missing, but then his follow-up swing finishing her off. And by the way, he seem, it seems to be a turn, a slightly turn, uh, uh, claims to be a little, a little turned on by Bramble's like, ferocity. <laughs> so, oh boy, what's that relation? And Bobby go... And uses conjure ammo, and I don't think he. I guess he got not not damaged before be, to uh, knock out a pack of form, or they just forgot about it. But he, because you're not supposed to be able to cast spells in it. But anyway, he conjures animals, and summons a wolves. Sarge manages to get a hit on one of the crab's eye socks. Uh, temporary blinding it. While I'm running away, I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yes, go for it. Go for it. All right. Scanlon, you're up. Oh, shoot. There's two more. Um... Merhags? There are, yes. And, okay. the, and the um the other like ritual uh Karens themselves are still glowing, but the third one has not been able Those to. Those ritual Karens. They are they, Karens. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They really Karens. Are. Uh, <laughs> Karens. <laughs> well, C A R N. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, this this is the Karen I trio. See a very, it's a Karen <laughs> they like to speak to the manager of this cave. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, scariest will, part of the I will step forward <laughs> and I will try to cast uh, Hold Person on both of the Karens. On both of them? Okay. Yes, at level mm. three, I believe I can do that. I have four tries to think they don't count. At higher levels, when you you can target one additional yeah, humanoid. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, mm. Roll an Arcana check for me real fast. Oh, they're not humanoids, are they? Uh, mm. uh, 19. 19. You're about to prepare the spell, and based on their nature, you get the sense that they may not be considered humanoid, and the spell may not have an effect. They seem to be more fey in nature. Yeah. Anyway, it's, so instead of that, he casts Thunder Wave. There. Uh, which, in addition to doing damage, uh, since it's the virtual light and stuff. Which results in him one of those saying, "Fools! Now it's just unleashed." 
and he finishes up by inspiring, uh, so inspiring Ran. And as a bonus action, I'll inspire Ran. Okay. By singing. Oh, nice. Ran. Can you do the ran ran? Can you do the ran ran? Can you do the ran ran ran? Early days were rough. Perfect. Awesome. The uh the crab man attacks Scanlan and uh like first scooping up Princess and that's giving him a big squeeze, knocking him out and like oh is like we cannot let Scanlan die. Ah, uh, this is a prequel. If he dies, it upsets the timeline. But oh yeah, uh, one second. Sirens are attempting to flee the battle, but Uh, but Ran and Sarge manage to hit both of them, and Bramble comes in fishing them up. Like, first, like, using her sword, I think her said her sword to behead one of them, and then sticking the head on the, the head on the end of her sword, heard, and just using it to smash in the head of the other one. So the sirens are on dead. Um, there, um, Bobby manages to go in and you and uh, heal Scanlan, uh, then unleashes his uh, the bear totem. Uh, his uh, bear totem, which he gets as a shepherd druid, and which d gives him all uh, ten hit t bear temporary hit points. A bobble that has an image of a bear, and was, it's time for everyone to see my twelve. You. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I it, Bobby socks. That is the most useful bear I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bobby Thank socks. You. His name is Bobble. Oh, I love Bobbles. His name is Bobble. I love Bobbles. <laughs> How's it feel? How's it feel? <laughs> so, that's All right, is that finished your turn, Bobby? Yeah, I'm out. All right, so you're still up against the crab. There, um. Uh, uh, Sarge, it, it, it Sarge is up, and he's got several voices, like, at first, like, uh, the, the spirit of this, the person who got murdered, say, avenge me, behind him. and, well, the song is, let's go and do great things, stuff like, and, and stuff like, and stuff like, Yeah, and this uh, is to to try to take the apple up on its offer. The voice says, "Seize your destiny. Seize my destiny. I will guide you. I will be your strength. I will be your power." Exactly. And you take a huge bite of it. I take a huge bite of it. Just <laughs> <laughs> <He> screams. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, no, oh, yeah. Yeah. Why are we <laughs> 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 Apple, what did you, 
bang! <laughs> you distracted the crab. <laughs> the crab both like both eyes look around as as the, yeah. the, the apple is screaming as you're chewing it in your mouth. Yeah. But as you're chewing it, you feel its power surging yeah. through your body, and you you with it with enough of this apple, you feel like you feel like oh, it, no. indeed its power could transfer to you. And so as it's screaming, do you continue to eat? Yeah. Do I continue as, to as, eat? Yeah, I'm asking you. Of course. You take another. I can feel it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my God! I keep eating. I keep eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you sure you're not the murderer? <laughs> no, not the murderer. The murderer. Not the murderer. Yeah. Eventually, the screams of this apple begin to subside as as it is Boy. devoured quickly. Yeah, sure. And as as the, nothing but the core is left. Okay. Anyway, it's bestows them. Mm, uh, Fifty temporary hit points. And he gets advantage on lost stuff like ability checks and attacks. He feels the of her. He leaps up into the air, coming down both arms in a place, and uh, uh, and that's when he and it, it lands a hit right off, like on like the where between the eye stalks and the. Uh, and at one point, uh, Matt tells us the whole damage, specifically 8d12 damage. And like, um, and on the second, then he did, for a second strike, he uh, huh, lands a critical hit. And after all the dice does, uh, the second hit alone does, like, a hundred and twenty-four points of damage, earning him the how do you want to do this? <laughs> Which is him just going after the just going grab parts and just going <laughs> and ripping the, the truly enormous crab in half. With the final word for the apple saying, Why? As they head back to the village, they are, everyone is greatly impressed with them, and they even are offered continuous appointment by the elder, like fifteen gold day, very nice. And uh, and uh, the festivities go off. Everyone's enjoying the this enormous crabs meat, like fire and stuff, and it culminates in the big event of the day. Where they call upon the spirit. Uh, they, 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 the ritual dance of the calling of the dreamer itself. But the, the guardian spirit, there's a massive crab who they worship and stuff and has kept the village safe for like hundreds of years. But strangely enough, the spirit doesn't. <laughs> Oh my god. Of the This is on called dance number that is called the calling of the dreamer. You can see the symbols and the iconography throughout the various flags of this massive crab guardian that has been here and kept the village safe for hundreds and hundreds of years. Wow. And as, as they finish their dance, and the, the spirit of the guardian has come to arise and bless them with another year of prosperity, everyone looks confused as, strangely, the guardian spirit does not Come when when called. I think you might need to go on the lamb from showing on the lamb. <laughs> oh no, who did this? That's two places he needs to be on the run from. Like eat. Two places <laughs> very quietly eat and have a beer. <laughs> oh. No one's putting two and two together as they're eating their crab cakes and their crab sandwiches and wondering what this somewhat uh, uh, disappointing end to the festival happens, but everyone kind of claps and cheers. The, the, crab. the really soft tasty fireworks, crab. and everyone goes home a little, a little worried. The elder. Gets extremely drunk and feels like it's his fault. Um, but as the event begins, to there. Um, anyway, they decide they have to go. They'll have to turn down the offer of to do his appointment before, and uh, be, uh, so uh, and we'll go leave before anyone realize 
realizes, well, oh, well, at least we have this giant crab eating. <laughs> Yell. Before that, there's no sound. And then, and then Dr. Dranzel goes to Santa to tell him that the, that the, the spectacular traveling troop is, uh, moving to Tadori and the, and which he guys the good place to go and the girls all head out there. Stuff like with one and as the episode ends we hear the voice of the guard go go goes go go to the voice of the spirit go, go to Sarge Avenge me is like you are just an asshole. And with that this adventure ends. Uh, Uh, there, um, with that, we get to today's homebrew, made specifically for this thing, the Red Nose of Children's Joy. By the way, I plan, uh, and since I'll have more Red Nose Days, and probably more Red Nose Days specials, like one-shots in the future, this will probably be the first of a series of items. It, it, is, it does require, this does require attunement. But literally, but though it, it, it could literally be anyone. While wearing this attuned red nose, using one of its eight, eight charges, you can cast Hideous Laughter. And when you do that, you make a performance check and stuff. Uh, which, and the check, what I'm check is, is the DC for that particular casting. And the and the nose that regains all its charges. You can gain the number charge equal to your the to the uh, attuned wearer's or uh, his charisma modifier. I mean, yes, like if you're doing a short a long rest. It, it attunes basically it recharges on long rest. This recharge on. Long but that means if you're just sleeping, you have to sleep with the nose on. <laughs> like, you're just sleeping. <laughs> yeah, this is meant to be also a comical one. You can all... But here comes a bit more noble one. You can use your action to bump or and or squeeze the nose in front of any adolescent creature, like a kid of any type. Something else. Granting them advantage on... On a type of saving throw of your choice one until the next dawn. Once you use your, you have in it, this one also recharges each, at dawn each time. Uh, I should probably note the also must be a, a tune and wearing to recharge this feature. And so yeah, again you ha ha may have to sleep with this on. And if the 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 one who's wearing it, the attuned wearer is also Atlas Fisher, they also get a say advantage on a saving throw of their choice until next dawn when they use this to get grant someone else that. A nice uh ki very kid friendly item here. And with that this review is over. I thank you for joining me. This is Free Nair, Free Nair Reimagine. I wish thee good fortune on the quest of life.